Okay, for this installment of the HP Intelligent Management How-To Series for IMC, we're going to complete the installation and initial setup of the new release 5.1 of IMC. We'll first take a look at what's new in IMC, release 5.1, and then we'll jump right into the installation, both of the base system and also those add-on modules. We'll then go ahead and bring up the system and make sure that everything is functioning and then do a quick little setup of uh, a small lab network. Also, since this video can be pretty long, just going through the uh, general installation process for IMC 5.1, I'll go ahead and split this into two parts, um, with this being the first part, and then look for IMC install part two uh, for the second installation uh, video. Okay, taking a quick look at what's new in IMC 5.1, you'll notice here that uh, these are just some of the larger features that we've put into the release itself. Uh, Microsoft Hyper-V support, we've included that in this release, uh, which extends our support of the virtual environment uh, for both Microsoft and VMware. We've added the Compliance Center which is a, a really neat uh, module that we've added for uh, allowing people to do some compliancy checks of whatever type of uh, compliance environment they may have. You'll see some other features here. Uh, probably the last big thing, or last two big things here, is the um, uh, mobile application that we've built for IMC, which you can put onto an iPhone or an iPad or a Android uh, environment and allows you to communicate and work with IMC while you're uh, away from the office or away from IMC itself. So it keeps you in constant contact with the application uh, while you're out and about. Uh, the other big thing here I think is kind of neat is the uh, Google Maps support. So now we'll be able to import Google Maps environments into the IMC uh, server environment. Okay, before we get uh, started with the install, there's a couple decisions in the uh, and preparations that we need to make uh, prior to actually installing the application on our hardware platform. First is is you know ensuring that the server that we're going to place uh, the application on is uh, capable of running the application itself, whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit operating system. We can support both Windows and Linux. If you're looking at the Windows uh, environment, here's some of the server requirements that we would suggest uh, for the number of nodes being managed that you uh, equip that server with. So typically, if uh, you're going to go with uh, enterprise uh, IMC, we out of the box support up to 200 nodes being managed. So you're going to want at least four gigabit, probably six to eight is going to be the best. Uh, from a memory standpoint, 60 gigabits of hard drive uh, is probably preferable uh, for a system like this. And then two CPU or one dual core CPU uh, for the 32-bit. The and really the same requirements for the 64-bit. If you go above 200 nodes being managed, I think we want to look at uh, some of these other requirements to make sure that uh, you meet the basic system requirements for the application itself. As we come down here, uh, we do support Linux, um, and, and here's some of the traditional requirements for the Linux server environment. Uh, and then I want to come down here and start talking about some of the software requirements that we have. So we will operate in a Windows Server uh, 2003 environment. Some of the uh, requirements or remarks that uh, are here for that uh, particular server environment. I would recommend Server 2008 64-bit. Uh, uh, which was going to re need, need release uh, 2 for that service pack 1. And then depending on how you've purchased uh, the application itself or got the application, if you download it from the website, we do have an integrated database uh, that you can go ahead and install the application with. Or if you have your own SQL server environment, 2005, 2008, release 2 or whatever, uh, here's some of the service pack requirements that we have for those. And you'll just have to, in the installation phase, point the, uh, the uh, application uh, installation environment to that particular server. So just some uh, typical server software requirements that we have here. We just want to make sure that uh, they're met before we actually do the installation itself. Okay, so let's get started with the installation. 
First of all, you want to log into your uh, Windows uh, Server 2008 environment as administrator. We want to install the application uh, as administrator moving forward. Um, and depending on how you uh, received your uh, installation package, um, whether it's CD or you downloaded it from the website, um, uh, will we'll really determine how you proceed from here. Um, I've downloaded the enterprise version from the website. I've installed it in this particular directory, HPIMC 5.1, and that then exploded out uh, these five different directories uh, that you see here. One, documentation, has all the documentation that you'll need for installation, administration uh, of the uh, 5.1 environment. Uh, modules uh, is the directory where you can store uh, those add-on modules that you might get. Uh, I also downloaded, had the capability to download all the uh, uh, add-on modules that you see here. Patches, uh, empty directory, or just those uh, uh, directory for patches that may come down uh, from engineering and so on and so forth, platform, and then README. So under platform directory, um, I've uh, exploded out or ex extracted out the uh, IMC platform uh, for enterprise Windows, Windows, sorry. And we'll go in there and we'll select install. And then there is a uh, batch file uh, installation environment. So we'll just go ahead and click that and begin the installation process itself. Fairly simple, standard installation windows will start to, to come up. Uh, country, region, United States will uh, stick with uh, English. Um, and we'll do a typical deployment here. We can do a customized deployment uh, if you want to deploy certain uh, components. Uh, you know in in the environment at a separate time so we'll go ahead and do a typical install here okay and it's going to ask me you know checking the installation parameters where the installation location is where i want it to be where the data file locations uh, i want to be and then my http and https ports that i want to use so you can modify these just remember if you do remember what they are and where you put the with the distribution Okay, <clears throat> and then the, the application will actually go out and make sure that you're meeting some of its uh, minimum uh, physical memory size, database size, or, or, or memory size, uh, and make sure that you've got enough disk space to actually put the application on and make it run. We'll go ahead and hit continue here. <clears throat> and now it's going out and then checking for uh, other installed components that might be out there. Um, it's going to complain here that IMC is not empty. You know that's fine we'll just go ahead and install it within IMC and now we're beginning that process of uh, installing the different components this can take a while it's going to unzip unpack put the uh, files in the appropriate directories and then we'll move on with the installation from there okay we're about uh, I don't know it's probably six to eight minutes into the installation and uh, what I wanted to show everybody here was that um, uh, we're well into the installation itself and uh, what the installation process has done is uh, unpacked all of the um, files, put them into their own directories, unzipped them and uh, has actually gone in and uh, installed uh, the uh, uh, SQL server database environment onto this machine itself since we had the integrated database. Uh, and now it's deploying and installing all the different uh, base platform modules out there. And what I wanted to show you here was that uh, you see the deploying uh, 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 window here. Uh, it's building the database for this particular module, and then it's going to start deploying that particular module onto the server environment. Over here, uh, once it uh, starts the install, it actually brings up this thing called Intelligent Deployment Monitor Agent. Okay, and this particular agent is kind of a window into the operating environment of IMC. Uh, it allows me to um, check progress of, of uh, different services and so on and so forth. And what it's doing now is is actually going through and deploying uh, the environment onto the server and it's showing its progress in this particular window. Uh, if we can get this to slow down here and move down. But you can see here where the IMC platform analysis manager 
uh, has been deployed on the primary server and so it's going to go through this particular installation and deployment of each individual module uh, so we'll come back and start up again once uh, this particular uh, task is completed with the installation okay at this point we're about um, probably 10 minutes into the installation and the installation process has actually gone and completed the installation of all the different platform modules onto the primary server uh, I wanted to show you something here. Let me move this window over. Uh, but you can see that um, all the different uh, modules or resources of the application that have been deployed will have this server icon with a green uh, uh, bubble showing that it has been deployed on the primary server and is is has been deployed correctly. If you look down here, there's a server with a little red bubble. Uh, the network behavior analyzer server hasn't been deployed. Uh, we really don't have that particular module installed on this, per, this platform at this time. So it didn't deploy that particular uh, server environment. Um, so anyways, it looks like everything's been deployed here on the primary server. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, it tells us that the batch deploy has succeeded. And let's go ahead and start IMC server now. So this will start kind of the uh, initialization process of the server and we'll bring that particular server up. So one thing I want to show here is that in the Intelligent Deployment Monitoring Agent, there's four tabs up here. One is uh, Monitor <clears throat> uh, tab, which where you can start and stop IMC. This is where we would install additional modules that you'll see here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, and you just saw that the uh, CPU usage and memory uh, usage, physical memory usage uh, grids just popped up. So what IMC is doing now is actually starting all of the processes that are needed to make it run. Uh, and uh, the processes that are started will be located with this little uh, triangle and, and, and green circle. Those that are starting uh, will have an arrow uh, with the green circle and uh, triangle in them. And um, you'll notice that most of the processes are started uh, with some just starting or coming up. The uh, process that probably takes the longest is the process down here at the bottom. It's called the, the J server. Uh, it will always come up the last and they'll always go down the last. So you know that IMC is fully functional when that J server, uh, when that icon turns to the solid uh, green with the triangle in it. Thank you.